I'm afraid if I want to tell you, but what divorce lawyers do who are bullies, but it's not from my experience as one. It's uh, I've been on the other side of it. Uh, let me preface it with, with a statement that a much smarter attorney than me said to me many years ago. And they said that a, a good divorce lawyer's job is always to be working toward trying to get to a fair and reasonable settlement as quickly as can be done. And that way, the parties have the least amount of their financial and emotional resources caught up in the process, and they are able to preserve as much of their dignity, their money, and their, their resources generally to get on with their lives. The, the bullies, I think, take a different approach, or at least view that differently. They, uh, they use the process as a way to try to menace or hurt or bludgeon the other side. They're often disrespectful to the, the lawyers, sometimes even openly to the court. But the, the process becomes the punishment. And uh, that's a pretty, pretty egregious thing. When you, you show me someone who proceeds, takes a divorce case and they proceed from a view of they want to make it painful for the other side, uh, that's a very misguided uh, approach. It's terribly unconstructive. A number of different ways. Number one, by their reputation. Um, number two, by their demeanor and tone and their communications. And um, number three is lack of professionalism, name calling, you know, that kind of stuff. The divorce lawyers who are bullies do not cooperate with exchange of information. We call it discovery uh, in our world. Uh, they also, I think, make unrealistic promises to their clients that create more drama and more litigation uh, to benefit really only the attorney, in my mind. It's pretty obvious. What's nice is that because we're such a small community, you know, what's interesting about divorce lawyers is we know each other in most cities because criminal defense lawyers, they're always fighting the prosecutors. So they're polarized, you know, prosecutors are always trying to put my guy away. You know, insurance defense lawyers, others, plaintiff's lawyers are always trying to take money from the insurance companies, family lawyers, we know each other very well because I represent the wife who's been abused against another lawyer. And the next day I might represent the husband who's being accused of abuse against that lawyer who's representing the victim in that case. So we sort of are in each other's shoes and we know that um, the way you should act in a family law case is to take everything with a grain of salt. And so I think the good lawyers have a reputation for saying, look, this is what my client is telling me. I wasn't there, but this is what I think the facts will be. The bad lawyers will say, your client did this and your client did that. And they always end up with egg on their face because when you go to court and it doesn't turn out exactly like they said, all of a sudden they say, well, my client lied to me or I didn't know those were the facts. Well, that's the problem, you know. Um, but another problem I think with family lawyers is a lot of family, a lot of us are solo practitioners. And I don't mean that there aren't some great solo practitioners, but I've surrounded myself with a lot of lawyers. That's why we have 16 divorce lawyers here so that if someone tells me something that just doesn't add up, I can run into another lawyer's office and say, my client said this, this, and this happened. Does that make sense to you? Does it add up? And they give me questions and, and it's a sounding board. Um, but you know, it's not really hard to find out when a lawyer is a bully. You just know it because there are lawyers. I had one the other night who wrote to me at eight o'clock at night and said, I wrote to your paralegal at 6.30 at night and she didn't answer me. And I felt like using that old line from Animal House, you know, you don't get to abuse our pledges, only we get to abuse our pledges. You know, you don't get to mistreat our paralegal, only we get to mistreat our, you know. So if someone is rude to your staff, you know they're a bully. If someone is rude to you, you know they're a bully. And, um, and it's really not a good thing to be a bully in a family law case because you're gonna see the same lawyers again. And the next time around, no courtesies, no extra continuances, no extra time to respond to documents, so uh, to document requests. Um, it's not really hard. I can't really tell you this is how I know someone's a bully, but it's like Potter Stewart said, the Supreme Court Justice said about um, pornography, or uh, he said, I don't know how to describe it, but I can tell you, I know it when I see it, you know? So you know a bully when you see it. And, and I think reputation really tells you. You can ask any divorce lawyer, what do you think of this person? And if they're a bully, everybody knows it. Divorce lawyers who are bullies use language in an attempt to intimidate and frustrate the other lawyer. Usually that language is inappropriate and unprofessional and is often totally unrelated in size or scope to what the issue is. And that bullying 
is usually a sign of a less talented lawyer. How do I know when another lawyer is trying to bully me? Well, I mean, a lot of what we do, Reagan, is is I, with the same lawyers in our community. So some of them I just know are going to be bullies. That's their go-to. But if I have a new attorney or somebody that I'm not aware of, um, you know, it's an attitude. Uh, it's 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 a lack of cooperation. Um, it's a, a a lack of being open to suggestions that may that someone may take as critical, but they're really just suggestions to help the case move along. Uh, those are the things that I that I see with bullies because they, they've they got one, the bullies have one uh, focus and that's to bully you or your client and do whatever it takes to make that happen, even if it's unreasonable. Uh, sometimes I'm not real good at it. I, I sometimes miss the fact that an attorney's trying to bully me because somewhere in the bravado or somewhere in the conversation, I just think it's funny, um, and 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 just it just doesn't really land home. Um, I you know especially if, as I have aged and my credentials have risen and my my you know people can say all kinds of things and I've either am am able to lap to move that to just simply something logical they can do. I had a conversation the other day. Somebody said, well, if you don't follow through with this, we're going to do depositions. And I said, well, okay, <laughs> you know, that's not a threat. That's an option you had last Tuesday. That's an option you have today and you can do them tomorrow. Um, I think it's going to be a waste of time in this case. I think that they don't serve any purpose, but I'm not bullied by the idea that somebody's going to take, make in, uh, a choice to do an alternative they otherwise could. Threats very rarely work, and I would say old lawyers are really hard to threaten. You know another lawyer's trying to bully you when they use unprofessional language and are overly aggressive relative to the importance of the issue. And sometimes it's very much like a Shakespeare quote, the lady doth protest too much just by arguing and sending another lawyer a three letter page when two sentences will do, usually is an indicator of some sort of willingness to go farther than it needs to go for that particular issue in that particular situation. And that shows a lack of professional judgment. So that's interesting because I just wrote a book and that was one of the topics I covered in the book. And the question is, how do you effectively deal? How does a newer lawyer effectively deal with a uh, uh, either a treacherous or a, a bully uh, lawyer who they, they confront? And number one, prepare thoroughly, so you make sure you're a master of the case, both the law and the facts. Number two, deal with the bully the same way that you would as a 10 year old kid on the playground. Um, if you cower to them, they'll take advantage of you. So if you punch them in the nose, the bully oftentimes will collapse. And I mean it figuratively, of course. You, you don't let them get away with it. You strike back and you're assertive and self-confident in your dealings with them. And oftentimes their behavior will moderate. Uh, they'll take advantage of you all day long. In the courtroom, um, they're going to try to trip up a newer lawyer and the newer lawyer needs to be self-confident and, and able to withstand the onslaught. And usually if you can just hold on long enough, it will end up okay. My best advice faced with a bully is, uh, the first one is, is do not make it personally. And I'm speaking as the lawyer. I'm assuming the other lawyer is the bully. Don't take it personally. Easiest thing in the world to do is to think I've got to uh, respond in, with the same type of, of anger or conduct as they are dishing out. It's not helpful. It also makes it very difficult for the judge to figure out who is the problem and who is not. 
So don't take it personally. View that as this is a, a lawyer who doesn't have the skills to be a better advocate and a better divorce attorney. They're doing all they know. Uh, it's more of a concession of weakness than it is strength. Document everything in the case. Document, document your file. Uh, don't have any hearing or proceeding where there isn't a transcript. Uh, don't assume anything can be done informally. You want a letter or a me an email, something you can point to all the time. Get the judge involved in the case. Uh, I'd suggest with a, a Rule 16 conference, a signal to most judges in a divorce case that it needs some additional oversight from the judge. So you're getting the judge involved quickly uh, in the process that hopefully will give it some more structure. But it's a document the file all the time with everything. Don't assume anything can be taken for granted. What advice would I give a family lawyer who's opposed, opposing a bully lawyer? Um, uh, utilize the court to your benefit. Uh, I find that if you have a bully lawyer, judges or magistrates generally recognize it either by reputation of the lawyer because they've been in front of them in the past or just by you know picking up on it in a hearing and so the court's your friend right because if you're reasonable to a judge or a magistrate and that other side is unreasonable you're going to win every time as the reasonable person so i suggest that you really in those cases don't trust the bully lawyer and rely on the court to be your friend in that process i teach what is called collaborative law and i teach financial issues for the local law school and it's often a concern of of the new attorneys how to handle someone who's in, in what you might call a bully um, and in bully mode and i think it helps to first of all recognize that people who are weak who are unprepared and who are unsure are the first to jump to the bully mode. Second of all, I think it's important to recognize that if you objectify the situation that you're in um, and understand what, what's going on um, in, in the, as far as your client's needs, you can keep your own wits about you and don't have to retort in kind. And I think it's also really important to recognize that retorting in kind, being a bully back or just say, oh, no, you can't, simply stoops to their level. And anytime you argue with a fool, you're going to, they're going to bring you down to their level and beat you with the experience they've amassed over the years. The advice I give young lawyers who are opposing a bully for the first time, even if that lawyer is very, very experienced, is very simple. Don't take the bait. When they ask you a bunch of rhetorical questions, see that for what it is, rhetorical, which by definition means doesn't call for a response and if the bully lawyer is trying to put you in a corner to negotiate from their framework your job is to not go into that corner in the first place so create your own settlement perspective get a settlement offer out as soon as you can as soon as you have the information documents and you know what your client wants prepare a settlement offer then many of the bullying tactics won't work because then you're in the commanding position of pushing dates, deadlines, and pushing the case forward because you've done your work. And if, it, if rolling into mediation, you're still getting bullied, then the mediation process may help you get that case settled, which is good because that's the goal, is to get your client a favorable settlement within a reasonable period of time and the bullying often in my experience goes away and dissipates as soon as the vitriol between the parties dissipates and just having one settlement offer out even if it's not answered within a week or two let's say even a month the vitriol tends to dissipate during that time and may get to a point where both parties are willing and able to settle from an emotional standpoint.